I'm a 16-year-old female and this happened back in mid-August. My dad wanted to bring me and two of my friends to the beach for a short vacation. We couldn't afford a really expensive place, so we stayed at a really crappy motel. My dad had his own room downstairs and my two other friends and I went up the stairs to our own room. He gave us an air horn and field hockey stick, just in case. The first two days went really well, no problems at all, until the final night we were there. We'd gotten home from the boardwalk around 11pm and were hanging out in our room. I decided to go outside of our room for a second, since we're on the second floor. Leaving the room was just immediately being on a balcony where you could see out onto the road. Across the road, there was a parking lot and I saw a car and about four younger guys standing near it. I then decided to go back in and told my friends that I saw some people outside. So one of my friends then went out onto the balcony and shouted, Hey! And waved at them. We all went back into the room now. And about two minutes later, we hear a knock. It's the guys from the parking lot. There was only three of them there though. As they said, their fourth friend was on the phone with his girlfriend. All of them are 18. They were really nice though. I could tell they had no bad intent. After around 10 minutes of them being in our room, we hear another knock. We open it and it's their fourth friend, but someone else was with him. All of us were confused. And after I started asking the four guys that I willingly invited in, if they knew this man, they all said no. The one friend who was outside brought him in because he had alcohol or something. We started asking questions and came to find out that this mystery man was 32. So now, in our room, were not only four 18-year-olds, but a 32-year-old man as well. At this point, I decided that they had to go, so I kindly told them that we needed to head to bed, and they all needed to get out. Finally, they were all gone, including the 32-year-old man. However, one of the younger guys really was interested in one of my friends, so he came back up and asked her to go to his car with him. We didn't want her to, not because he was not trustworthy, but because we all had already decided that it was time for them to go. She refused, however, and went to his car with him. So now, one of the other guys was back in our room, talking with me, and the other two were down at his car, trying to get my friend to come back up. The 32-year-old man as well was still around. He referred to my friend, the one in the car, as pearly whites because of her teeth. At one point, me and my friend were out on the balcony talking to two of the boys while the other was trying to get my friend and we saw the 32-year-old man by the curb and he shouted, Where's my pearly whites? We all got freaked out at this point and I urged the two other guys to please go get my friend. She finally came back, but the guy who originally invited the 32-year-old man in our room was now arguing with him because they, like us, were also getting freaked out by this man saying things like, they are way too young for you, you need to go. And he kept saying, no, I'm not about that. We now closed our door, not wanting to be involved. We got one of the guy's Snapchats and he kept updating us about their friend who was still arguing with that 32-year-old man and how the man apparently pulled a knife on his friend. They finally told us that they got in their car and left. But I just had a feeling that the 32-year-old was probably around our place. So I go up to her door and make sure it's locked. And the second I do, I hear a knock and a voice saying, Hey, those guys stole something from you guys. I wanted to give it back. At this point, I know this older guy most certainly did not have good intent because clearly none of those boys stole any of our things. So while my friends were sitting on their bed, I was the one that had to talk to him. I replied, that's okay, we don't need whatever it is. We're going to bed, okay? He kept saying that he wanted to give us whatever was stolen from us and I just kept refusing and saying that it was time for us to go to sleep. He finally gave up and walked away at this point. But now, I picked up the field hockey stick and I was sitting on my bed shaking and honestly afraid. My friends kept saying it was fine and he wasn't going to come back. However, after 10 minutes, he came back. I heard the knock and I got up very reluctantly and I heard him say something along the lines of sorry about tonight and so I just kept calm and said it's okay I just really need you to go now 
We need to go to bed. Finally, it was the end and he left. This was around maybe 1.30am or even 2am in the morning. Needless to say, my friends fell asleep shortly after that, but I honestly couldn't. I kept thinking that he would come back and I was afraid for my friend because of the creepy comment he made about her. I was wide awake probably until 4am until I finally felt calm enough to fall asleep. Long story short, I'll never be letting anyone into a motel room of mine ever again, even if they're my age. So, I grew up in a farmhouse built in the late 1800s. It was an L-shaped house, two stories with porches on three sides. I used to actually love that house and the farm it was built on, but I was always scared of the upstairs floor. There were three rooms up there, a large central one, and then two bedrooms that formed the L-shape. If I had to go upstairs for any reason, I would always run up, grab whatever item I needed, and then race back downstairs. And if I was home alone in the house, well, forget it. I would avoid the stairs altogether. Anyways, at night, I would sometimes hear someone walking up the stairs. My parents always told me it was just the house settling, as old houses do or that it was just a rat or something. Anytime I was in the upper rooms, I always felt like someone was watching me. My brother always made fun of me because of it. He never had any issues up there. Because of that, he eventually moved his bedroom up there to the forward room when he was a teenager. He took the larger of the two rooms, the one with a closet and a hook-eye closure on the inside something that could keep pesky little sisters out, as he put it, as if that was really necessary up there. A few days after moving up there, he wakes up one night to find me at the foot of his bed. He asked me what was wrong and said that I turned and motioned for him to follow me. So he got up, turned on the bedroom light, and discovered that his bedroom door was still latched from the inside. He was the only one in there. My brother reported several incidents where he would find things moved around and would blame me. I insisted I did not want to go in his room. On two other separate occasions in that house, I felt the quilts being pulled off me. I would turn over and see a skeletal hand and arm that ended at the elbow grasping at the covers and dragging them from the bed. Each time this happened, the apparition was coming from the same location, as if reaching through the door beside my bed. I would hear footsteps walking in my bedroom and feel someone watching me as I hid under the covers. My mom later told me that she would sometimes hear someone talking in the house when she was the only one there. The entire time I was there was from age 7 to 14. I experienced many odd incidents that my family would brush off as just a child's overactive imagination. It was only after we moved from that house and I was an adult that my family finally admitted that what I experienced was real. They thought by telling me it was just my imagination that I wouldn't be afraid. So. After years of thinking I was crazy, I was kind of relieved to find out that no, I wasn't. 